Thank you for setting the bar so incredibly low, Mike. Uh, Rich, thanks for joining us. We have a relatively brief session and a lot to get through. Mm -hmm. I know this is something you've been dealing with for uh, quite some time. You were at SRI for a while. You had Superflex. That was the name of the spinoff initially. We've seen drips and drabs of what you've been working on, but this is really the, the big show. That's right. So can you, uh, can, you, can you tell us what you've been working on? Yeah, of course. So, uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, really excited to be here today and, and privileged to uh, reveal the first powered clothing product from Seismic. Um, our team uh, in Menlo Park, has our, our amazing team in uh, Menlo Park, has been working extremely hard um, to create something that uh, we believe will be truly impactful and really change people's lives. And we think about what we're doing um, by creating the first practical super suit, uh, but a super suit that really can be a part of your everyday life. And our, um, the capability that we've created to enable this is something that we're calling intelligent wearable strength. And so I've, I'm going to introduce a lot of terms to you as, as I'm describing our product. An intelligent wearable strength are uh, uh, robotic muscles that are outside of but aligned with your body uh, and can be programmed to provide strength when you need it. Uh, our first uh, product will be powered clothing for core wellness. So we've created intelligent wearable strength that addresses the lower back uh, and the hips with the objective of improving quality of life by improving mobility. Uh, you can think about our suit in terms of three different layers. There's a base layer, uh, and there is a strength layer, and there is an intelligent layer. But really, the best way to understand it is for me to show it to you. So uh, let me, I have a few friends here today to, to help me do that. So I'm going to ask Bob to come and join me on stage. This guy looks familiar. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. So, um, so the first thing I'd like to point out about the product that is, it is designed uh, as an undergarment, as a base layer. So, uh, if you are want to be discreet about the uh, wearable strength uh, that you have, you can do that. But we've also designed it um, around a premium uh, sport performance uh, design approach. And uh, if you want, you can wear this just like uh, any kind of active wear. You can wear this to the gym. Um, it can be a regular part of your day. You can come on stage um, at a conference. Yes, you, yes, yes. Yeah. You definitely, um, uh, someday we'll all be wearing it for sure. And uh, the thing that there are two uh, uh, features of this base layer. Uh, the first is that it uh, anatomically aligns uh, the muscles in the suit to your body. And so um, this suit is speci uh, specifically designed for Bob. And our designers, when they're, when they're fitting you, they're going to you know, have their tape measure around their neck and, and they'll be uh, measuring uh, your inseam but they also understand your neuromuscular structure and uh, we're going and taking measurements that align exactly um, the muscles exactly to uh, your motions. And then the second uh, feature is the, uh, that it aligns those muscles to your body and, and we do that through a couple of uh, features here, just pointing out um, this gripping structure around the waist and then there's another gripping structure here uh, at the thigh, and the muscles actually extend. You can't see them, but they extend um, from uh, this muscle pack here into the, uh, into the gripping structure at the waist. So, so um, the muscle system here is part of the strength layer, and so I'll, I'll uh, describe that as well. So thank you, Bob, and I'd like to ask Allison to please come out. So I mentioned earlier that we are addressing core wellness and uh, we're, uh, we've replicated three different muscle groups in the product. Uh, these are aligned around the core, so the hip extensors. I always get this wrong, so it's uh, just like your arm, flexion and extension. So we flex and we extend. So our hip extensors, the gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, um, the hips, hip flexors, um, and as well as then the, the back extensors, the lower lumbar uh, muscles. Um, the, uh, if you can turn to the right, then 
we're showing that in here is the, uh, the muscle structure as I described before. This is a, a pack that can be removed from the body, uh, can be removed from the garment. The batteries are here in the center and all the electronics are here in the center um, and that can be uh, charged separately. And then the garment layer is left that can be taken off and cleaned. And this is something that can be worn um, every day, all day, eight hours. Um, the battery life is, is uh, designed for eight hours of activity. And then, as I was describing earlier, the muscles extend. Here's, uh, here, the hip extensors extend up um, from this motor system here. So this is the power um, that drives the muscles. Um, and they contract just like uh, our normal muscles. And uh, while the uh, suit is listening to your body, they automatically turn on um, and support you um, based on the, on the control. So um, the control itself the includes, the, the suit also includes a range of sensors. In the, um, in the uh, packs here, the muscles each have their own force sensor, and there's a uh, nine-axis IMU in each of the, of the muscle packs. And then on the back, there's an additional um, IMU, and also a, a host processor. So this is a fully independent platform. Um, all, it doesn't need any other kind of device to operate, and we actually consider all other devices as accessories to, uh, to the product. But the brains of the system really exist in this lumbar patch, as well as uh, additional um, muscles. We also have a uh, full wireless uh, communication capability. Um and that, that allows us to use the, the sensors uh, um, for lots of different applications, although the first uh, use is for the control of the system. So, and that's part of the intelligent layer, so I'll, I'll move on to that now. Thank you, Allison. So it's always um, doing demos with children, pets, and robots. So we're actually going to go live here. <laughs> And I've done this a lot in my career, and we've had 100% success. But what I'd uh, like to be able to do is show you inside of the suit. So you left the babies and pets at home? What's that? Yes. <laughs> there it goes. There we go. Okay, so we can show the dashboard. So we've created a dashboard um, that is uh, communicating to the suit. And you can see it here. And so um, right now, uh, this, this suit is streaming data, data to the dashboard. And uh, Tierney is showing just how the activity tracker is changing um, with her motion. And you'll see on the right, we're just looking at some posture um, tracking. Um, she's moving. And if she sort of stands still, you'll see it um, move to the standing position. Let's see if you can get it to stand. And there it goes. And then on the left, we're showing the forces coming from the muscles. So on the far left is the muscles coming from the extensor, or the forces coming from the extensors. On the right are the uh, muscles coming from, the forces coming from the muscles on the front. And in the middle are the forces coming from the lumbar spine. So when she came out, uh, the lumbar uh, muscle was already activated. So the, uh, the first uh, purpose of our, uh, the sensors on the suit are to control it, and uh, we have a uh, user experience that we call symbiosis. And symbiosis means that the suit is always paying attention to what the person is doing and automatically turns on uh, when you need that, that strength support. And it's very similar to our own nervous system. Right now, my, my heart is beating a little bit faster, and my, my uh, uh, lungs are breathing a little bit deeper, but that's happening all on its own. Um, we want the suit to act the same way. And the, the, your muscle tone is actually being set by that same nervous system. So what I'd like to do is um, show just a simple example. So Tierney would sit down. Um, one of the key uh, and, uh, features of the suit is having enough power to assist with standing up um, with hip extension kinds of activities. You can see the suit recognizes she's um, sitting in, in a relaxed uh, manner. And then if she sits into a position where she's about ready to stand, so 
So the suit actually just set the bass tone. It just got ready to support her. And then now as she stands, it will turn on. And you'll notice the forces on the left, the forces in the extensors actually increased and supported her. And that's exactly what your glutes are doing when you're standing up out of a chair. So we've coordinated this um, with, with her motion. And then as she's standing, the suit is recognizing her standing and automatically and increasing the, the co-contraction, the, the, both of the forces in the flexors um, and the extensors to give her support. And this is sort of like, you know, when you're, you're on a boat or a bus and it's, everything's moving and you're, you're holding yourself. That's, what, um, that's what's happening here. So, um, so that's the intelligent layer. And uh, I'd like to move on to one more uh, point about the suit. Thank you, Tierney. So... Just to point out also, uh, um, so Cody is wearing a, a, uh, you know, the same uh, clothing that uh, the rest of our models are wearing. And one of the big insights for us when we uh, uh, first spun out, and one of the things that's really driving the company right now, is that we had this insight that um, like nobody in this room is wearing robots. And I used to say that, and there's actually people in this room wearing robots now, um, but there were um, no one wearing robots, and we really understood that our, our objective was to bring new functionality to clothing while re uh, maintaining people's relationship with clothing in terms of comfort and aesthetic and emotion. And, and so Seismic as a company really is branded around that objective. It's really um, has, has uh, created our positioning and everything that we're doing is, is about th uh, thinking and acting like an apparel company. And we actually see what we've designed as um, sport performance activewear. Uh, when we've gone through our beta testing, our, our users are out playing golf in it and playing tennis in it. Um, they're, they're cleaning their house in it, but they're also sitting, sitting in it for a long time and getting some back support after their their back gets tired. So um, we're really excited about this positioning and also the reaction we're getting from the, the first uh, consumers of the suit. And then you'll also notice as I've been introducing the suit is the colors. Uh, and so... What I'd like to highlight is that what we've been showing you here are um, the colors that represent our spring 2019 um, collection. So I'd just like to finish by presenting our uh, 2019 powered clothing collection from Seismic. Thank you. All right, we don't, we don't have a ton of time, so let's, uh, okay. let's blow through a couple questions. First of all, obviously, this is kind of a new paradigm. I mean, you know, you're not selling a TV or, or a smartphone here. How do you convince people that they actually need to wear a, a robotic suit? Yeah, it's actually, um, we convince them by giving them the opportunity to try it, and that's really what we found is that... Um, First off, it's really hard sometimes for people to understand what we're doing when we say there's these extra muscles on your body and it's, they're working with you. No one's seen anything like that before. But when we, um, we work with them and onboard them, introduce them to the suit, they wear it and they immediately experience the benefit of the support. They understand right away when they're, when they're getting up out of a chair. We have people that can't get up out of a chair without um, having the suit on. The, they immediately stand up and they, and they recognize that power. So I, I do think there will be a need for us to to create uh, a way for people to experience the suit, and then, then word of mouth and that understanding will start to emerge. So what, what, is that, what does that model look like? How do you actually get people to, to try it on? And, and who is the initial demographic for this? So the, we really, as a, as a apparel company, we think about um, anyone who has a body and wears clothing should be a customer for us. Okay, so, but you got to start so small. you got to start right, somewhere. Yeah. So I, so, but I wanted, but that's, it's really important that we're not um, limiting the, who the, the target uh, uh, customer is. We definitely see the baby boomer population as an initial target market. Um, and when we think about how we support the product, uh, we, will, we see um, some kind of a bespoke tailor type of experience experience combined with like a genius bar. Um, so we really, you know, if you look at uh, the, the nature of what we're doing, it's so interdisciplinary. Um, we need that apparel fitting kind of capability and support as well as the sort of tech 
um, support that, um, that that goes along uh, with the product. I mean, it's interesting you bring up the Genius Bar because, you know, obviously in that example, we're talking about Apple products mm -hmm. at Apple stores. So, you know, there's an existing market right there. People go in because they know the Apple brand and they buy Apple products. But what does the retail channel actually look like for a product like this? So the early on, we'll, we'll be creating our own uh, experiences and, and really positioning the, the product and, and owning that relationship with the first customers. When we look at how we'll expand in the market, we are absolutely interested in, in partnering with somebody. We don't um, want to necessarily create our own uh, network of new retail stores. And you know, a lot of people are saying that retail is hurting, retail is dead, and it's, it's not really. It's just transitioning. And what we found is that the retailers that we've spoken to actually see um, all of their strategic objectives in our product in terms of um, how can they bring people into their existing stores, how can they integrate more technology, how can they improve the experience. Um, so I think our product aligns really well with the, the transformation that we're seeing in retail. Sure, w but what sort of retail location am I going to walk into? And am I going to walk into a, a Macy's? Is it going to be an outdoor store? Will it be a medical store? Who, who makes sense as a partner for you? Yeah, so it's um, it's still open. So we, we actually have multiple conversations going on, and there's actually you know um, any of those that you're describing could end up being that partner, but we don't have that specifically defined in. So it seems like p perhaps a little bit of an easier sell if it is being positioned. Obviously, you can't necessarily call it a medical device at this. point. Point that requires FDA approval, but as an assistive device for people who have mobility issues, um, you know, perhaps there would be less of a concern for wearing something like this. But if you are targeting sort of a, a, a younger demographic, and it's something, granted, it's something that's meant to look discreet, but you know, even underneath a, a layer of clothing, you mm -hmm. would still notice it. How do you, how do you appeal to a younger demo? Well, I think the design that we just showed is the starting point. We're showing something that people can relate to, that people can see themselves wearing. Um, and, and then from there, it comes back to just their own perceived uh, need or value. Um, so we absolutely think um, just core wellness is very uh, specific. Like That is where the biggest need is. There are not products that provide this kind of capability. And any time I make a presentation afterwards, I'm approached by people of every, every um, background, every age. Um, there, there are all kinds of reasons why people would like to use this. And, and it's not just necessarily about um, having an injury. It could be you have a job where you're on your feet all day long or you're sitting all day long, a, a truck driver or a barista, um, somebody um, coming home uh, on the weekend and having something that can assist you. Or if you ran a marathon yesterday and you want to wear something like this, it, there, there's, no, there's nothing like this that exists. So we think we're creating this new... Um, this new capability, and we understand that we have to educate people about it. So, so part of being uh, fashion forward, I know that you've um, employed folks from a lot of different companies. Um, you have somebody from North Face on your staff. Uh, part of that is getting people to really kind of embrace it and acknowledge the fact that they're wearing it, or this is something that's meant to be, you know, like a pair of underwear or long johns and meant to be completely unnoticed. Oh no! So you—it's—it's it's really up to the to the wearer. So you could absolutely wear it under your clothing discreetly and not ever tell anyone you're wearing it. Um, the, the, and or if you want, it's designed uh, to be active wear, and you could wear it to the gym as is. So what? So again, for something that uh, there, there really is sort of no precedent for a product like this, what is an ideal price point? Yeah, so the, um, we're actually, again, thinking about the apparel positioning uh, we see entering the market uh, in the range of high-end designer apparel. So it's the, the right way to think about it. Can you tell me a little bit about the, uh, the Lumo acquisition? Yeah, so um, that actually was just a really great opportunity for us to um, bring intellectual property and an excellent team um, into our company uh, and aligned with the objective that we have. Technically, in terms of the, the suit, I just showed you the ability of it to use the sensors to track the posture and to use that information. Um, and we're so aligned in terms of our mission, so we're, we're actually um, now able to take that Lumo capability and use it to uh, control our robotic system, where before they were using it as cues. Um, so very, for them, they're basically it's business as usual in terms of the, the way they're tracking the body. So toward the end of the demo, we had some of these metrics on stage. So this, mm -hmm. is, this is actually actively tracking things like posture, um, biometrics. When you talk about private data, I mean, it thinks 
don't get any more private than that. What, what steps are you ensuring to make sure that all of that stays private? Yeah, it's, it's exactly right. And so we, so it's, there are so many aspects of what we're doing from that point of view. So we, so we definitely have to recognize that we're managing personal data. We have to use all of the state of the art approaches for security. Um, very early on, that data, as, as I've been highlighting, is, is specifically to control the suit and the data products that will emerge are, are the next, uh, next range of products. So I mean, in the near term, that data is going to stay local. Um, we're going to do uh, everything to manage that properly. And then in the future, we'll begin to bring out other data products. So we've got about 20 seconds left on the panel right now. So I'm going to ask you real quick, uh, what, what time frame are we looking at? When will people actually see these in the real world? Yeah, so we are in a position, we expect to have uh, some limited placements in the market next year, and then beginning to expand um, from, from those uh, initial systems after that. Great. Rich, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.